In this video, we're going to take a look at the reactions of metals with steam. Now, after our work last week, we've looked at the reactions with cold water. And now we can add a few metals to our reactivity and we'll put these through. Now, the most reactive metal we had seen up to last week was sodium. Do you remember we had to keep it under oil and so on? And we saw sodium react with cold water. But when it dropped potassium in, do you remember it was more reactive? It caught fire, reacted much more quickly, and it's actually quite a dangerous reaction. So that's why we have to use just little tiny amounts of the potassium. So we actually put potassium above sodium. So the top of our reactivity series, the most reactive metal we're going to come across, is potassium. And then we've got sodium. Now, underneath it, we've then got calcium. So you remember we dropped the calcium into water, and it fizzed and reacted sort of quite vigorously, not just as fast as sodium or potassium but it's still there then slightly below that was magnesium and in fact when we dropped it into cold water very little happened we've got a few fizz and bubbles but we've seen magnesium burn quite well you've burnt it already this year and you see that it's quite a reactive metal but a little bit less reactive than calcium then with zinc, we'd seen it being less reactive than magnesium before we'd put carbon just below zinc before iron we'd put there as well and now we can put hydrogen on because we know all of these reacted with the cold water, even if it was very, very slow. So, for example, iron, we know rusts. If we put water onto it, it rusts. So that's iron stealing oxygen away from the hydrogen. So we can put our hydrogen here, just below iron. And then the metals that didn't react, well, copper. When we drop the copper in, nothing happens. And hopefully last week you realised that copper is what we use to carry water around the homes so or pipes and things are made out of copper if you've got a hot water tank it's made out of copper and it doesn't react with water so it can't steal away from the hydrogen and then the two metals that we use for jewelry silver and gold they're very unreactive and you can wash your hands without worrying about damaging a gold or a silver ring and they don't react with water because they can't steal oxygen away from the hydrogen so the reactions last week we saw compared to hydrogen, anything that reacted with cold water is above hydrogen. It can steal the oxygen away from hydrogen oxide. Remember, cold water is hydrogen oxide. And anything that didn't react, like copper, is below hydrogen on the reactivity series. So we saw last week calcium, for example, up towards the top here. It reacted very, very quickly. It was a good metal at reacting with it. Magnesium didn't really react. All that we got were a few bubbles. So that isn't really proof, I suppose, that it reacts with water, that it can steal oxygen away from the hydrogen. And the iron rusts, but it takes a long time, so it's going to be very difficult to demonstrate those reactions. So what we're going to do is we're going to speed it up. And one way of speeding it up is turning the water into a hotter substance. And the hottest form of water is if you turn it into gas, steam. So we're going to show the reactions of the metals with steam. So I'm going to show you magnesium, then zinc, then iron reacting with steam. And on the worksheet, you'll see I've put three spaces for you to put observations. If you haven't got the worksheet or can't get the worksheet printed off, have this in the file page, absolutely fine. You can just, I put the heading and then write the observations underneath it. So we want you to write the observations as you go through. And then at the bottom of the sheet, we'll ask you to do the word equation. So I'll talk through that. So we're gonna show first of all, magnesium with steam. And there are two things to look for with this. Look at what happens to the magnesium as the reaction takes place and then watch what happens. You'll see a little short delivery tube on the apparatus that I demonstrate and watch what happens at the end of this. So here's our magnesium with steam. So we'll just pause it for a moment just so you get a chance to look at the apparatus before it starts working. And if you look, you'll see we've got clamped a boiling tube horizontally, although there's a slight slope on it. We'll talk about that in a second. And you'll see in the middle of the boiling tube, there's a roll of magnesium. That spiral is some magnesium metal. You'll see some water around the test tube because we've uh, got plenty of water in there. And if you look up towards the left hand side, you'll see that there is a white substance there. It's looked like a wool and so on. And what that is, that's Roxel wool, or sometimes we can use glass wool. 
which is really a ceramic, it's the type of thing that you put into your loft for insulation. And it's heat proof, so whenever we heat it, it's not going to catch fire. It's not like cotton wool that might burn. This uh, doesn't burn, but it holds the water in place. And it means that that's actually soaked with water. We've got lots and lots of water there. So that can be turned into steam. And you'll see whenever I get the reaction started, then I'll heat that and we'll get lots of steam coming across. If you look towards the right hand side of the test tube, you'll see a little short delivery tube, a little glass tube there. And watch at the end of that glass tube at one point when the reaction gets going. I'm going to ha hold the lighted splint there and watch what happens at that point. So we'll run the video. It's only a short minute or two to, uh, to get the reaction going. So you'll see the heat come in and fairly quickly you'll see some of the water that's been lying around there turns into steam. So we need to get lots and lots of steam so that the magnesium can react with it. It takes a minute or two or a few moments for the heat to get into the magnesium. But at some point you'll see the magnesium start to react. You'll see we've got a movement and then suddenly the re magnesium reacts. So what's that? That's what I want you to record down. And if you think how magnesium normally reacts, you'll see this. And once the magnesium starts reacting, I'll move the heat over towards the ceramic wool there and get lots of steam and then at that point watch what happens at the end of the delivery tube so there's the magnesium starting to react so write that observation down there and look also over at the little delivery tube and there's a good indication of the reaction now what has been happening well the magnesium is reacting with hydrogen oxide and if magnesium is above hydrogen in the reactivity series we should have two products so if you look inside the test tube around where the magnesium is now the blackiness is because it's actually destroyed the glass so don't worry about that that's just the magnesium having fused into the glass but do you see lots of white powder in there as well now that's magnesium oxide isn't it so magnesium plus hydrogen oxide has given us magnesium oxide so you record that as well, that you get a white powder of magnesium oxide as well as that big flare up. And then we saw at the end of the delivery tube, something catching fire. Well, that can be hydrogen. If you've got hydrogen with oxygen, that catches fire. So magnesium plus hydrogen oxide gives us magnesium oxide plus hydrogen. So there is an example of magnesium able to steal away from hydrogen. Okay, so... At the bottom of the table, and if you want, you can pause and record your observations and write your word equation uh, before we do zinc, or you can save it all to the end or sort of watch the video again and do it uh, the second time, whichever is more suitable to you. Okay, so the word equation, as we said, sorry, the, the, we put underneath there, is magnesium plus hydrogen oxide, and you finish it off. We talked about it as we were watching it. So you finish off that word equation. Magnesium plus hydrogen oxide gives us and then you put that at the bottom of your table. Okay, so the second experiment I'm gonna show you is zinc with steam. So two observations. So again, watch what happens to the zinc. This time I'm gonna be using a test tube to try and demonstrate this. So we're gonna try and capture the hydrogen that's given off and watch and see does the test tube fill up quickly or slowly. And look at the zinc and think, does the zinc react quicker or slower than the magnesium? So we'll show the zinc reacting with steam now again we'll pause the video just for a second or two so you'll see again a test tube this time so a slightly smaller uh, test tube and if you look at the end of the test tube you see that white uh, th that white wool again holding the water so that we can generate lots of steam the gray powder there is zinc so you're going to see that i'm going to heat that I'm going to hit the zinc powder and then if you come to the end this time you see the little delivery tube has been extended so it's a bit longer this time and is dipping under some water and inside the water trough that we have on the right hand side there you'll see a couple of test tubes and corks now i'm going to heat the test tube and i'm not going to collect the first gases because as soon as you heat a test tube with air the air expands 
and it comes out. So even if no reaction took place, you get bubbles of the air coming out of the test tube. And we don't want to collect the air, we want to collect the gas that is being produced from this. So you'll see that it takes a moment or two of heating and the bubbles settling down before I put the test tubes in. And then if you watch those two test tubes that are in the trough, whenever the reaction's taking place, I'll put those over the end of that little delivery tube and you should see them fill with gas. And you judge, is it filling quickly or slowly? Watch particularly the second one is a good indication of, of if the test tube is filling quickly or slowly. So we'll run the video through. And again, it's just a relatively short one, a minute or two to get the reaction going. So we put the heat onto the zinc and you'll see what I see there about the, say about the bubbles coming across. So we're gonna ignore those bubbles. You see lots of steam being generated inside the test tube there. And we're ignoring those bubbles. So in a moment or two, you'll see me lift the test tube over the end of the delivery tube. And that's a sign we're now starting to get some reaction. Now, if you look, there is a reaction. You see we're collecting a new gas. And if you look at the zinc, just where the flame is hitting it, you'll just about see it turn yellow. Now look at this test tube filling. Is that quick or slow? Fairly obviously it's quick, isn't it? And if you look at the zinc, you see it's a yellow substance. Now I'll lift the whole apparatus out because if you leave it in, as it cools down there, the gas is in there contracting, it actually sucks the water back in again. And if you look there, is the zinc yellow. Now if you look at this cooling down becoming white, we'll talk about that in a second. So what I'm now doing with the test tubes is I'm going to try and prove that there's hydrogen. Hydrogen is an explosive gas, so if you get the right mix of it, it can give a pop. Now, I couldn't get the sound easily onto this and show you it, but hopefully you'll see evidence that as we get rid of the test tube, you'll see there's a bit of a pop. And that's a sign that hydrogen gas has been produced. So that test tube popping like that, there we go. So that's a sign that hydrogen has been produced. Okay, so if you look inside the test tube, the zinc turned yellow, it's now white. And do you remember that powder that's yellow whenever it's hot, white when it's cool, is zinc oxide. So zinc has been reacting with the hydrogen oxide, that's given the zinc oxide. And then the gas that we've collected there it's hydrogen, it's popped and that proves it's hydrogen. So zinc has reacted with hydrogen oxide to give us zinc oxide plus hydrogen. So again, if you, we'll put this back up again. So your observations, what happened to the zinc? Again, if you need to watch the video again and go through it. And then did the test tube fill quickly or slowly? Use that second test tube as a good judge of it there. And then was that reaction generally faster or slower than the reaction with magnesium? Think of where zinc is compared to magnesium in the reactivity series. That'll give you a bit of a clue with it. Now, and at the bottom of it, the word equation. So again, think zinc is more reactive than a hydrogen. So complete it. Zinc plus hydrogen oxide gives you, and again, we've gone over that on the video. So if necessary, rewind and go over the video to help that. So fill in your observations for zinc and then the two the word equation for it. Okay, so the last one, iron with steam. So again, look for our observations. Look at what happens to the iron this time. And then does the, fest, the test tube fill quickly or slowly and compare it to the zinc one? So watch whenever we're filling the test tubes. So we'll run this one. So the apparatus, I'll not pause at this time, is exactly the same as the one with zinc. And you'll see the gray powder being heated there is the iron. So you'll see the steam starting to form. Again, I'm not collecting the first few bubbles. That's just the air expanding. And then after a moment or two, you'll see I'll move this over the top of the delivery tube. And we'll start to collect the gas. Now, if you look at the iron, first of all, not very much sign of reaction. And if you even look at the test tube, now compare how quickly that fills compared to the zinc, it's obviously a slower reaction. 
the iron only just about glows. That's about the height of it. You see a little bit of a glow in part of the iron there. There's not really very much reaction obvious with the iron. And then there's the test tube. That's it going at full pelt. But compared to the zinc, definitely much slower than the zinc. So that proves that iron is a bit less reactive than zinc. So it did just about react. It did react and we did get a reaction, but it's obviously much slower than zinc. So again, we're going to do the test just to prove that there's hydrogen there. So you'll see we stop with the test tube there and then we'll check that the hydrogen pops. So again, the word equation, iron reacts with hydrogen oxide steam. It gives us iron oxide and then watch and see if the gas pops to, to get hydrogen. Yeah, so hydrogen. So iron plus hydrogen oxide gives us iron oxide and then the gas that pops there, hydrogen. So there's our reactions with steam. That's our three reactions with steam. So with the iron, two things to observe. What happened to the iron? You saw that on the video, so again, rewind if necessary. Did the test tube fill quicker or slower compared to the zinc? And then generally, is that a faster or slower reaction than the reaction of, that should read zinc, right? So is it a faster or slower reaction than the, the reaction of zinc? So how did iron compare to zinc? And then word equation, iron is more reactive than hydrogen. So complete the word equation, iron plus hydrogen oxide gives us, and you complete that on the worksheet. Okay, so once you've got your worksheet or your file page completed, so you'll have your three boxes, three observations, three word equations. Then the only thing to finish off, the last task to do this week is just to give me a nice neat copy, a ruled label diagram of this type of apparatus. This is good practice at the apparatus. This is as big apparatus as we'd nearly ever get you to draw, even when it comes to GCSE. So try and draw using the usual rules, rule with pencil, labels, put labels onto it. And there's this sort of apparatus that we use to react metals with steam. So you'll see the glass wool label there, the glass wool soaked in water, the metal sample, so that one showing magnesium would be a bit of a spiral, but you saw that we use powdered metals in there as well. The cork holds the delivery tube, and you'll see then the delivery tube goes into the water trough, and then you've got the test tube, and the hydrogen can bubble through. So practice drawing that. So give me a nice li ruled, labelled diagram of that apparatus as your final task for this 